Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome to the channel and your first steps in Logic Pro. In this course, we aim to introduce you to Logic Pro and the basic tools you need to get up and running quickly. There's plenty to cover, so let's jump in and get started. Logic Pro is a digital audio workstation, often referred to as a DAW or DAW. DAWs are programs that are capable of recording and handling multiple audio streams and MIDI controlled software instruments and playing them all back together. DAWs are seen in some of the biggest studios around the world, but also at home and on laptops for the laptop producers. They have become a staple in modern music production and they are everywhere and there are quite a few of them to choose from. While every DAW is a little bit different, they all function in relatively the same way and contain most of the same features. Honestly, it's down to you which one you choose. So if you're looking to get into Logic Pro, this is the course for you. Logic Pro is a well-rounded door that's often used by a, a large number of people. It's often the preferred door for singers and songwriters, for film score composers, for producers. A number of professionals use it. It's a door that actually combines a lot of the features found across many other door programs. So if you're looking for something that's well-rounded and has a lot of robust features, Logic Pro is probably the one for you. This course is going to introduce you to the interface that we're working in with Logic, all of the basic functions like recording audio, recording MIDI and software instruments, and a little bit about how the signal flows through the door and you can edit them with audio plugins, automation, and other little fun stuff like that. We'll also be covering off how to save correctly, export your files, and manage your sessions. You may be a complete novice to music production, or you may be coming across from another door. You may even be one of my students watching back this video, diving into Logic Pro for the first time. Whoever you are, if this is your first step into Logic Pro, this course is going to take you through that process. There are some limitations and considerations when using Logic Pro. We do need to consider these before we start trying to get our computer to run it. Logic Pro is only a Mac available program. This means that only Mac OS users and Mac devices will be able to take advantage of Logic Pro. Most laptops available today, pretty much thanks to the M1 chip that's now available, can run Logic Pro quite easily. If you want to get the most out of Logic Pro, I would think about maybe investing in a MacBook Pro or maybe a Mac Mini or Mac Studio or something with a little bit more power than a MacBook Air or an entry-level computer. Having said that, they can all run it, it's just how much you want to push it. The other thing to consider is also ports. We're going to be connecting some devices and we're going to talk about that in a moment and they're going to need to have ports connected to the computer. Of course you can use MIDI USB hubs and all sorts of things to get those devices connected to your computer but do consider that you're going to need enough of them to get everything that you want connected. If you are using an older computer and you're not purchasing a new one, which is totally fine, just make sure you've checked a couple of things first. Logic Pro is an intensive program so often it runs best on computers that have solid state drives rather than spinning drives so they can access things faster. It helps to have a higher amount of RAM. Eight gigs is minimum, but 16 is definitely recommended. Also, a decent processor would be great. Something that's maybe quad core, like an i5 or above from Intel, if you're not going down the M1 new Mac route. This will provide you with enough power to run the program smoothly and give you a little bit of headroom to be able to grow in the future. While all you need to run Logic Pro is your computer, there are a few extra things you could get that will enhance your experience with Logic Pro and allow you to do some of the things that we're gonna look at in this course. The first thing that will immediately benefit you is a decent pair of headphones. And I'm talking about closed back headphones. These are the types of headphones that have no air escaping, no sound escaping out of the back of those headphones. While that also helps make sure that you don't annoy people around you, it has a more practical reason. When we start recording with a microphone later, you don't want the bleed from your headphones to get into your recording. Now, you can connect your headphones directly to the headphone port, but if you're looking for a little bit of a step up in quality, plus adding some features like recording microphones or recording guitars and instruments, then you're gonna need to get yourself an audio interface. An audio interface, which is often a small box, or you can get larger ones of course, allows you to take a guitar cable or a microphone cable and connect it to your computer by converting the sound over USB or Thunderbolt or something like that. It also allows you to connect your headphones and control the volume from that audio interface and you can even connect speakers as well. While I often recommend headphones when you're starting out because you're going to get the best sound because you may not necessarily have a good room to set up some speakers in, speakers could be handy later on down the track. The most important thing of course is being able to record microphones and record guitars 
files and instruments, you're going to need an audio interface for that. Not everything is recorded audio though. There are some instruments that are controlled via MIDI. We're gonna talk a little bit more about MIDI later on in another video, but what you need to consider is if you're gonna play some of those software instruments, you may want to invest in a MIDI keyboard or some sort of MIDI controller. Most MIDI keyboards are simply plug and play and work over USB these days. And you can pick up some for a very cheap cost. So it's a very good investment so that you can actually play some of the instruments that you get free with Logic Pro. If keyboards aren't your thing, don't worry. There are other types of controllers out there such as pads. You may be more experienced with Akai samplers or something like that. So there are options that use pads rather than keys. You can still play melodic lines, but you can also play drum kit lines and all sorts of things from that controller. So that might be more up your alley. Now, if you're a guitarist or you're an instrument player and your instrument has an output, great, that's all you need. However, if you're a vocalist or you want to record something acoustically, a microphone is definitely gonna be needed along with an XLR cable. I would definitely recommend always having at least one microphone in your toolkit. Microphones are versatile tools. They're really easy to set up and you can get a lot of creative options when you add a microphone to your toolkit. Making your own samples, recording your own parts, recording other people who contribute something to your track. All of these open up when you have a microphone. A couple of great options would be the SM57, a dynamic microphone that is great for instruments and all sorts of things like guitar cabinets as well. If you're more a vocalist or you wanna capture something in higher detail, maybe the Rode NT1A. This is a condenser microphone that picks up a little bit more detail and could be great for your vocals. Before we get stuck into the main bulk of this course, I do want to highlight that I have made this at a particular moment in time. The Logic application that I'm using is currently at version 10.7.3. Updates happen regularly, and once you've purchased the software, you pretty much have unlimited updates for the rest of your life, as far as I've seen anyway so far. However, they do bring slight changes every now and again to the way that it looks and the way that it functions, such as some of the latest updates have been surround sound, binaural mixing, and that sort of thing. It also had a little bit of a visual update as well between 10.6 and 10.7 and that can happen from time to time. So if you're looking at this from the future and it looks a little bit different it's most likely going to be okay. It's probably still in the same spot it just looks a little bit different to the way that mine might be laid out. Any major or significant updates I'm probably going to update videos along the way so do consider subscribing to the channel for that one. So thank you for joining me at the start of your first steps into Logic Pro. This course is gonna be rolling out shortly. Of course, if you're in the future, you can watch them all now, but there'll be eight videos in total, including this one. As I said before, we're gonna be looking at things like the interface, how to record audio tracks and MIDI tracks, working with audio effects, automation and mixing techniques, and also how to set up, how to manage the files, and how to work with the signal flow in Logic Pro. So do click subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video, and I'll catch you in the next one.